Breaking news, but expected news. Michigan defensive lineman Aiden Hutchinson declaring for the NFL draft. He is considered one of the top prospects in this year's draft class. Our draft expert Ryan Wilson has him going second overall to the Lions in his latest mock. Hutchinson had a huge senior season in Ann Arbor, racked up 14 sacks. He was the runner-up to Bryce Young in the Heisman Trophy voting. Had a great game against Ohio State where Michigan wrapped up the division and then they beat Iowa in the Big Ten Championship game but did not have really any impact at all in the college football playoff semis against Georgia. Hutchinson going two to the Lions behind only Evan Neal, the offensive lineman out of Alabama who Ryan had going first to the Jaguars in his latest mock draft which he just uh, put together on Monday. Let's bring in the aforementioned Ryan Wilson. Uh, Ryan, how much have things changed, I guess, over the last couple of weeks for Aiden Hutchinson? Because there were several weeks where you had him first overall. Then he had, you know, kind of a, a, a no-show, I, I would say, in the uh, college football playoff semifinals. So you drop him to number two. Yeah, the funny thing is, Chris, I didn't drop him to number two for anything that happened over the weekend in that Georgia game. It was more a function of the Jaguars not needing an edge rusher. And I just checked before we came on here. The previous six weekly mock drafts, Aiden Hutchinson ha had been number one going back to late November where he replaced Kayvon Thibodeau. He remains my number one player in this draft class. It was just a matter of fit in Jacksonville. That's why he dropped it. Had, did he play great in that Georgia game? No, he didn't. But we talked about this on Monday with Brady Quinn and Danny Cannell. Had that Georgia game happened earlier in the season, then they played Ohio State and that semifinal game where he absolutely destroyed Ohio State's uh, vaunted offensive line, we probably are having a different conversation right now. I think at the end of the day, NFL teams will look at the totality of his work and come away thinking, hey, this, this guy's pretty good and probably worth the first overall selection, uh, and they'll go from there. Not a great showing against Georgia, but not as terrible as maybe perhaps we're making it out and if it makes Aiden Hutchinson feel any better. He certainly played better than his line mate, David Ajaba, who's also been in the first-round conversation for weeks now in my mock draft. He struggled a little more. But again, at the end of the day, Aiden Hutchinson is my number one player, and it's a very little uh, of a surprise that he announced today that he is going to forego his, his final year at Michigan. I'm surprised, Ryan, though, looking at the rankings. I'm surprised that our site, and I know you're not the, the only one covering the draft for us. We have a, a bunch of experts ranking the prospects for this year's draft class, but number seven overall and ranked as our number three defensive end. Are you higher on him than, than many of our, our other experts? Yeah, I love them. And in defense of the other experts, those uh, rankings probably haven't been updated in, in maybe a month, maybe uh, six weeks. So uh, I'll give them uh, uh, the benefit of the doubt. But I'm also willing to blame them as well because I love Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, and I think that uh, he has a chance to be a special player. Uh, is he Chase Young? No. But also remember, Chase Young came out as the number two player drafted behind Joe Burrow, and we thought he was going to be the next time to Lawrence Taylor, and he hasn't had quite that success, obviously, at the ACL injury this year. But Aiden Hutchinson is a guy who I watched after the 2019 season where the, the bust began, and, and I didn't see it. I didn't see him as a first-round talent. I honestly I thought he was a, a day three guy. Uh, last year was a COVID season, so it's hard to take anything away from that. And then he came back this year w with a purpose and a focus, and he was bigger, he was stronger, he was faster. He checked all those boxes that you want checked when you're trying to decide who's a first round pick especially at that position and I was blown away and I'll tell you this Chris uh, midway through the season the conversation was always about Kayvon Thibodeau being the first player taking the edge rush out of Oregon because he's a special talent no doubt about it but I texted a couple scouts and said how crazy is it to say out loud that Aiden Hutchinson might be better than Kayvon Thibodeau and the response I got wasn't you are indeed crazy it was that that makes some sense and that will be a conversation teams will have going forward uh, so I think that's where the consensus is going to settle and I don't know if the Georgia game really matters that much. We'll certainly talk about it. But I think the bigger takeaway is how much progress uh, Aiden Hutchinson made from early in his career at Michigan to what we saw week in and week out uh, this season for the Wolverines. Ryan, how does he compare uh, to a Kayvon Thibodeau, to a George Karloftis, who uh, was actually ranked ahead of him in the defensive end rankings uh, at our last check of the rankings on CBSSports.com? Yeah, for me, George Charlotte out of Purdue is uh, a stronger version of A.J. Epinesa, uh, who came out of, of Iowa a few years ago, second-round pick of the Bills, and, and I think he has a chance to be that sort of player. He's not quite as explosive or as dynamic in my mind as either Hutchinson or Thibodeau. Thibodeau is just insanely athletic. Uh, he's built low to the ground, even though he's 6'2", 6'3", and the, the strength just, just jumps off at you uh, when he's going against uh, what are usually helpless 
offensive tackles. Look at this game here. Jackson Kirkland, the left tackle for, for UCLA, had some struggles. Uh, and he's going to be a player taken pretty high in the draft because that's what happens when you play against Kayvon Thibodeau. I think the difference in terms of the, the playing styles with Aiden Hutchinson is that Aiden Hutchinson is always on. Thibodeau might take a playoff here or there and not get to the quarterback. And it feels like Aiden Hutchinson is always in the backfield, always uh, either disrupting the running player in the quarterback's face. And I liken him to uh, if there was another Watt brother, he would be between TJ and JJ in the uh, defensive line hierarchy. Obviously, Derek Watt is a, it's a fullback, but he feels like that sort of player with that sort of motor and can be uh, that sort of game-changing talent. Now, again, we said the same thing about Chase Young, so we'll see how this translates. But right now, there's very little not to love uh, about Aiden Hutchinson. Now, Brady Quinn mentioned this Monday, and our guy Pete Prisco has talked about this as well. He wonders where's the, the ceiling for Hutchinson. Has he reached it? And, and that'll be another question NFL teams will have to sort through uh, through this draft process. But I, I just go back to what I said earlier. It feels like he's just scratching the surface on, on the progress he's made from early in his career to now. And I think the ceiling is, is much higher than perhaps we, we might think it is as we sit here. All right, Ryan Wilson has Aiden Hutchinson number one on his big board for the NFL draft. He was the number one pick in Ryan's mock for each of the last six weeks until this week. Just fell to number two, but Ryan does expect him to potentially be the number one pick in this draft. Hutchinson declaring for the NFL draft today. Pick 6 podcast, latest episode on the Washington football team getting a new nickname. We will know that nickname in about four weeks. And Big Ben's last home game. Check it out.